This video is sponsored by Surfshark. This is the best season Apex has ever had! Or is it? After months of screw-ups, disappointments, and more cosmetics than I can count, many people are saying this is the season that could finally save Apex. We got some fat changes. Almost enough for me to believe them when they say the team is hyper-focused on Apex. Yo chat, why this game so fun chat? We got a new legend, big map changes, rank tweaks, and after four years in the making, cross progression. Kinda. But behind all these flashy updates, there's much bigger issues everyone seems to be ignoring. And if you guys know anything about me, I can't let them get away with it! But you know what you can't keep getting away with? browsing the internet without any protection. And that's where today's sponsor Surfshark is here to help. Surfshark is a VPN that specializes in keeping your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information set between your device and the internet. It also allows you to swap the real location of your device with a new one so you can virtually travel to any country. And let me tell you, Japanese Disney Plus slaps. You can even use it to get early access to games by switching time zones. No more giving away your personal information for free when using public Wi-Fi because with Surfshark, your data is encrypted and secured. Not only that, but Surfshark also has a clean web feature that blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. So when Billy does that infinite free Robux tutorial, click now, no downloads. Your PC won't be completely scuffed after. And for those of you who've been playing Apex for a while, Surfshark also has DDoS protection. So if Water decides to start playing again, let's just say he won't get deployed so easily. Masking your IP address is vital to keeping your private life private, and a VPN makes sure your city, country, and best of all, your download history aren't linked to your identity. That digital footprint go crazy. Surfshark is even running a Black Friday deal, so make sure to use the promo code DEVSCOY when signing up to get up to an additional six months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. And unlike some services, you can use one account on an infinite number of devices. So make sure to check out the link in the description to take advantage of all these epic perks, and let's get back to the video. I'm sure you're in as much denial as I am that the Titanfall 3 teasers are supposed to be for this new legend with as much relation to Titanfall as the Reaper that showed up for 20 seconds in the last cinematic. It really just doesn't add up to me, and there was literally no payoff to the teasers. Like, they kept talking about a message that we never got to see, they teased release dates, the CEOs were talking about Titanfall 3, and nothing. Respawn just took blue balling to a whole new level with these ones, but that's not the point of this video. So in Season 19, we got Conduit, a very original electric Filipino girl who kind of has monarch abilities, and and killed Titanfall 3. I'm not mad. Gorilla looking smell like bitch. I'm sure by now you know her kit, you've played her, and probably come to the same conclusion as me. Uh, she's fucking broken. And they made so many weird choices with her kit. But the two that make no sense to me is one, her ability goes through walls for some reason, and two, her ult is just obnoxious. I really don't get why Caustic Gas goes away after he dies, but Conduit's ult will sit there until she's literally in another game. And it's not like you can just say, uh, oh, just break it, LOL. Because that shit has 250 HP and she shoots like seven of them. And by the time you break even one of them, the third party already has your two teammates knocked. It's not like it does that much damage, but it's just enough to get you to the point where you're like, hmm, that's not enough for me when I use a cell on it, but it's gonna bother me if I don't. It's also just so much visual clutter, especially if there's more than one conduit, which there always is. And the issue with her ability going through walls is it rewards you for playing dumb, and so does her passive. Like, your teammate pushes up around a corner by themselves, and normally they get shit on like they should for being a dumbass, but conduit's just like, oh, here's another red shield for you that recharges, and let me give myself one too while we're at it. The amount of times in the past couple of days where I'm like, oh, I cracked this guy and he's completely alone, let me push. Just for him to be full shields less than one second later because of Conduit and I die thinking he's low, like, I don't know, it just feels like there should be some sort of positioning or skill required for how much value you get. But hey, at least the E-couples are finally gonna come to Apex 2 because now we have a pocket mercy. Apex cross progression is a lie. You wanna know why it took Fortnite less than a year to roll it out, but Apex took over four? It's because of money. When developing Apex, the devs opted to go the cheaper route and create a game in a more traditional sense where everyone's account data is locked to one platform and can never be moved no matter what. But Devscoy, they're finally merging our accounts from other platforms, so that's not true. But uh, no, it is. The reason it's still taking so long to roll out is because Respawn is individually going account by account and copying your items from one platform to another. That is the only explanation for why cross progression took so long. And to top it off, it's not even true cross progression because not all of your items transfer. Did you spend 3000 hours on console to get to Pred? Well congrats because no one on PC is going to know that because that badge isn't going anywhere. None of your ranked rewards will transfer and neither will any of your 4k or 20 bomb badges. I mean, PC Apex is basically console at this point because over 90% of players use roller anyway, so what's the difference? You'll get to keep all of your skins unless it's that one specific 
Epic Switch Pathfinder skin, as well as all of your currency, once again, unless you're on Switch, your heirloom shards to transfer and some of your heirlooms will. So to anyone who owns an heirloom on multiple platforms, pay close attention. If you have the same heirloom on two different platforms, you will lose that heirloom. It will be evaporated into thin air and the $500 you spent on it will go directly into the garbage can. Again. For example, if you have the Wraith Heirloom on console and moved over to PC, let's say you got super lucky and pulled an Heirloom for one of your first packs. You really enjoyed Wraith on console, so you get your Heirloom again, since Respawn confirmed at one point cross progression would never happen. But then, Respawn was like, when you turn up and now it is coming. But wait, I have two heirlooms, one kunai on console and one on PC. What happens when I merge my account? Do I get one of them back as shards? Nope, it literally gets deleted. Even if you bought the same heirloom on both platforms, you won't get any shards for it. No refund, not even crafting mats. So if you own the same heirloom on multiple platforms, instead of merging those two accounts, make an alt account on one platform. Merge the alt account so you still have two heirlooms. Based on how slow cross progression is rolling out, I'm sure most of you haven't gotten it yet, so hopefully I just saved some of y'all the depression of having your heirlooms Thanos snapped out of existence. Respawn is literally the only company I can think of that can tell us 1 plus 1 equals 1 and we can do fuck all about it. So yeah, you're gay. <laughs> Apex changes its rank system more often than Goku changes farms, bro. The second you think you know what's going on, they redo the whole thing again with filler arcs to match. This season, our newest form added rank up challenges, where you have to either win a game or get a certain amount of kills to actually rank up. Respawn's goal with these is to make sure season 16 never happens again and to keep rats from ranking up, which I'm all for, because I'm tired of these bozos claiming to be masters players all up in my comments talking shit. Like, bro, I get it. You were masters in season 16, so is fucking Joe Biden. You weren't special. And and while this is a step in the right direction, there are some major flaws that I don't know how they overlook. The biggest issue with these rank up challenges is they only activate once you reach the max LP for your current rank, no sooner. And it only took one day for me to run into the most annoying shit I've ever experienced. I was 10 LP away from ranking up, right? And I won a game with 10 kills. And you know what I got? 10 LP! In any of the old systems, I would have ranked up like I deserve to, but now I have to win another game if I want to rank up. I literally just won! Which might not sound like a big deal, but then you realize the current rank uses an MMR system. So while my visible rank didn't go up, my hidden rank did. And I'm sure anyone familiar with Apex SBMM knows what happens next. You fucking the shit out of me. Oh, you won a game? Here's a lobby with the top 57 players in the entire world in it. Now win or you don't rank up. Bro, I'm still in silver. This shit is so scuffed. I know I asked for them to do something about rats, but this is the weirdest way they could have gone about it. Not bad per se, but weird for sure. It also proves they give zero fucks about solo queue players, cause winning in solo queue past diamond is basically impossible. Even more so now, because everyone is required to play for the win to rank up. I've been in bronze lobbies with 16 squads in the last ring. Like what am I supposed to do as a solo queue player? I don't know man, a hot take, but I still think I'd prefer a kill centered meta than a win focused one. You can actually kill 18 squads by yourself, but die to the last one, and the game is like, mm, yeah, you couldn't win, so I don't think you deserve to rank up. Like, bro, make it make sense. Because to me, I... I just don't get it. If this is the route they want to take with ranked, that's fine. It's a bit better than before, but they absolutely need to add a separate queue for solo players. It is indescribably unfair to play against Masters or Pred 3 stacks as a solo. The other option, I think, is make solo queue players complete different challenges on their rank up because winning against three stacks is just so tedious. And on top of that, you only get 250 LP after you rank up, so it's pretty easy to de-rank right after you finally win a game, and now you have to win another one. They're for sure taking steps in the right direction, but it's also like they're trying to be quirky for no reason. Like, the rank challenge thing is just so weird. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but hey, what else can we expect from the company who also made the decision to add a character's ultimate as ground loot. Is it really a new season of Apex if there aren't at least a few dumb changes no one asked for? Cause Respawn is right on brand with some of the stuff they changed this season. One of the most controversial changes they made is to the revive system. In season 19, if you die and get spawned back in, you'll now drop with the armor you died with as well as both of your guns as long as they aren't care package weapons. Cause we wouldn't want people duping loot now, would we? My main issue with this is 
Who asked for this? Actually, please tell me. I'm so confused by this one. The point of respawning is it's risk and reward. You're supposed to be vulnerable, but now the team pushing is at a disadvantage because you have no clue what armor or guns they have. You could be a team with all blue and push a res, but oh no, they all have red armor with PKs and R9s and you're dead now. Like, I, I feel like a more balanced fix would be to just let everyone spawn with their abilities because then you still have a chance to escape if you're being pushed, but it's not like you can just turn on the other team and wipe them after you screwed up. Unlike with the rank changes, I just really don't see the vision here. Nobody asked for a duping mechanic. But at least for the first time in Apex history, I think there were more good changes than bad. They nerfed the can't see shit meta and turned Stormpoint from by far the worst map in the game to kinda playable. Now just remove Broken Moon and all the maps are actually decent. This feels a lot like hell. Until we get the new map in a season or two, which they'll probably fuck up somehow. Well, actually, they already did fuck it up because a playtester revealed they removed a wall running mechanic in favor of tridents, which is maybe one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. They also allegedly tweaked the SBMM this season, and at first I was thinking they're full of it because my first five matches were all against three stack Preds, but after playing some more, I, I never thought I'd say this, but I think they might have actually improved it. I'm winning games and it doesn't feel like everyone in my lobby is three times better than me at all times, so this might be a respawn W for now until people find a way to exploit it again. So what's next for Apex? We finally got a season I can say is actually kind of decent, so does that mean we can expect another three seasons of filler? Well, it turns out they actually have some solid stuff planned. You're teasing me, naughty naughty. We're supposed to be getting a new map in the next season or so, and it's supposed to take place near Angel City from Titanfall, so I can see it being pretty cool, but the thing I'm actually excited for is Legend Perks. They're finally listening to people when they said to just steal content from Apex Mobile because it was better than the main game, and now they're grabbing parts of the perk system. We're supposed to get these pretty soon too, I believe they're going live in pubs around the mid-season patch, so we'll have to see how it plays out. Instead of being legend specific, this time the perks are now universal and a bit more generic, so things like reduced cooldowns, holding more heals, more nades, stuff like that. And I've been MIA for a little bit, but it looks like the MNK versus controller battle has been heating up again recently, except this time, Respawn has chosen a side. So are the MNK players losing some movement, are the controller players losing some aimbot? Well, Respawn has sided with... The MNK players, the war is over, we have a winner. Respawn said they're going to be looking into tuning aim assist a bit, likely making it a little less strong, and I can't say that makes me particularly upset, but it is interesting to see Respawn finally getting involved because this debate has been going on since season zero, so I'm sorry controller players, Respawn has declared you the losers of the input wars. But that's okay because I still love you and you're all winners in my book, except for the script kiddies. If you enjoyed this video, you should totally check out this other one because the algorithm loves that and that would make Daddy Dev Squad very happy. Love you. Bye.